Right, we're live now. Well, I think we're live now anyway. I think I think we're live now. Yep, we're live. <laughs> Good afternoon from a bright and sunny Cheshire. <laughs> Welcome to another Simply Diagnostics video. Uh, it's not bright and it's not sunny. It's uh, I've got my uh, my new Simply Diag hoodie on, and I'm actually drinking a nice warm Diag mug from Spring Store. You're awesome. <laughs> Right, so shameless promo out the way. Um, what I've been asked loads and loads of questions recently about test lights and Ivan's latest video. Well, can it, Keith, Rick, how are we all? <laughs> One, two, five. Yeah, I'm following on from Ivan's video on Pine Hollow, um, the Subaru Window Saga, part two. It's raised a lot of questions about the safety of using test lights for testing circuits, especially logic circuits and things like that. Morning Daniel. So we just sort of run through with the um, the three test lights that I most commonly use and what, what we're actually going to do, we're going to look at them. Ryan, Eric, how are you? <laughs> yeah, we're actually going to look at them. I'll give you the part numbers and then we're going to look at the inrush current, what, what actual current goes through the test lights. So I hope you're going to find this interesting. So to start off, the test light that I use more often than not is the OTC3633. Um, at the moment, these are in very, very, very... Yeah, you're right there, Keith. These are in very, very short demand. The only place that I know that's got them available at the minute is scannerdana.com via his AES Wave store. Any of you watching in the UK, I would highly recommend that you buy through Paul's AS Wave store because all the, all the profits that go from that, Paul actually gives back to mechanics that need, technicians that need help, and AES Wave match them. So as well as buying a nice, a cracking little OTC test light, you'll also help support fellow technicians that are in need. So that, that's the OTC3633 available from uh, scannerdana.com through his AES Wave store. The next test light that I use is, if we can get that, so it's a snap on one, and the part number is EECT3HL. You can see there on it, it says 6 and 12 volt DC, 50 milliamps. That is not correct because I've got a red bulb in it. I've changed that so to change the current draw. Okay, and this is a great little test light, incandescent again. And you'll notice with this one that the actual tip's bent. And the reason the tip's bent is so that on the BMWs and stuff like that, where the fuse box is buried up behind the behind the glove box you can actually get in onto the fuse from an angle from the side also useful for vag fuse boxes and that they're on the end of the end of the dashboard so that was the EECT3 Hotel Lima and then the LED test light again it's another snap on one cheapest chips this this is the entry level snap on one and this one is rated at, we can turn it round, whether you can see that there, 6 to 12 volts, 20 milliamps. And that's the EECT2 Hotel. And this is an LED test lamp. So we'll start off with the LED one first. So we'll try and, try and uh, get it rigged up for you. So all I've got, I've got my battery pack here. I've got my Pico 4425A. I'm using a scope because we want to have a look at the inrush current. And then I'm using Pico 7 software. So all we're going to do is put... And you'll notice all my test lamps. What I've done is I've cut the crocodile clips off on all my test lamps. And I've put a 4mm banana on the end. So I can put whatever I want onto the end of my test light. Be it a crocodile clip be using the power probe 3 extension leads and stuff like that all my test lamps I've cut the crocodile clip off and put 4mm banana on so we're just going to connect that onto the onto the power pack 
and then we're going to touch it over there like that so it lights up okay and then what we're going to do is just put the current clamp around it so we'll start the current clamp running yeah and all I'm going to do now is just literally touch it on the positive of the battery and that's actually lighting up but we can't see any change whatsoever yeah and that's on a, a two amp scale and I can't take it down any less than that okay so we'll stop the we'll stop the scope running all right that didn't work so we'll try it again we'll touch it to battery positive <laughs> Let's go. Right, okay. I'm sorry about this. We're a slight technical problem here. Let's see what's going on. I've got no trigger set, so that should literally just be ca capturing. So let's try it again. The scope is now running. I'm back off. And then we'll zoom in. Let's have a look. Whoever's, ri whoever's ringing me, stop ringing me, please. <laughs> Sorry about this. People keep ringing me. It's increase the vertical light to thin that line down if we can. And what we'll do, we'll just drop a ruler down onto it. You can see there we're about 21 milliamps something like that <laughs> yeah tdm i should have done i should have put i should should have put it on do not disturb so we're about 21 milliamps there and that doesn't really change that's with an le with an led one so we can say roughly about 20 milliamps what it's what it's uh, what it's advertised at for the led test like no real no real spike for for the inrush current or anything like that so let's try the different one the is the snap on incandescent one that's the next one we could, we're going to try and that is the EECT 3 hotel lima so we'll try this one Start the scope running and we just touch it. Right, there's a difference there, isn't there? Straight away. I'll just turn my current clamp round. That's quite quite different that. So we'll stop that. Right, so this is the difference between an LED test light. Between an, this is the difference between an LED test light and and an incandescent one. You can see quite clearly here, we've got an inrush current there. So what that is, that's when the current first starts flowing through the cold bulb. We've got an inrush current there of about 1.4 amps. Yeah, 1.4 amps as opposed to when it's actually being connected for a split second about 157 milliamps so that is a lot different than the LED one hey up Andy how are you so we can see there right when we when we first when we first connect it we've got an inrush about 1.4 amps and then it settles down to about 157 milliamps so this is probably what happened with the uh, with with Ivan's window switches you can see at 137 milliamps there that actually makes a, that's a massive difference between 1. Um, 1.4 amps and 100 and we think this is maybe why it spiked the the logic circuit on Ivan's window. Yeah. What about the red one with the button? You mean the smoke generator? 
yeah, we don't we don't use. Sorry again about the very last one. It's the C three. Good question, Keith. But why would you want to? Why would you want to? Um, it'd be limited to the LED one, wouldn't it? There'd be no one no inrush current because it'd be limited to the current. Uh, it'd be limited to the current flow of the, the LED one. I would imagine. All right. So the last one now is the OTC three six three three with all our measurements. And we'll just run the scope again. Three three OTC. Is she connected? There we go, that's it. Right, so what's really interesting there, as you can see, I touched it on and off three times. Yeah, ball mechanic, uh, I'm freezing up because people keep ringing me. Yeah, I'm freezing up because people keep ringing me. So the last one, you can see, I've touched it on three times. We can see the first time I touched the bulb is 1.4 amps. The second time I touched the bulb, it was 660 milliamps. And the third time I touched the bulb, so as the bulb heated up, it got less and less, was... 512 milliamps so cold bulb warm bulb hot bulb and then what we can see is while it's actually constant we've got a constant current draw of 140 milliamps so that's uh, that's quite an eye-opener and like I say I think it's the inrush current that that caused the problem with the uh, with Ivan's So I hope you enjoyed this short video. Uh, I'm sorry for all sorry for all the buffering and, and all that malarkey. Um, it's uh, it, it is what it is. I'm afraid I forgot to put my phone on. Do not disturb. <laughs> Preheated test light. Yeah. So uh, in question, we can quite say depend depending on which incandescent test light you do. You really need to be looking at your inrush current. Um, and I'll be honest. Those inrush currents there that I've got off my two incandescent test lights are different today than the last time I measured them. Um, so it might be an idea, you know, it might be that as the filaments wear, um, you know, those those properties change. So it might be an idea to check them a little bit more regularly than we are doing. So again, I would sincere apologies for the for the buffering and that. Um, that was due to people ringing me and messaging me. I forgot to put me. Um, my phone on do not disturb and um, the advice there is if you if you want to be 100% sure and safe what you're doing with your test light use an LED if you've got any doubts at all um, incandescent and LED the LED alone would like I don't know Keith shall we try it shall we shall we try it that's it that's that's easy enough to try really is easy enough to try that so here's our little LED one so I'll connect that to battery negative and then here's our OTC one and what I'll do I'll just connect that there like that and then I'll put this end on battery positive so I'll flick the camera around. I'll flick the camera around and we'll get a current clamp on it. So the current clamp's on. We'll start our scope running. We'll start our scope running. So that's that one. You'll have to take my word for it if the, if the incandescent lights up. It's there on battery positive now. The LED's lit up, but the incandescent light has not lit up. And we can see, we can see there, right there at the bottom, that it literally, it only just. Let's do it again, one more time. So 
so you can see LED lights lit up bright. We'll stop it running. And just drag that red red cursor out of the way a little bit. We zoom in on here and you can see we're limited. The current is limited to what the LED test light would allow to flow. Again, which is uh, milliamps with no inrush whatsoever. So 30, 32 milliamps there. And that's using the two in series. Although why you would do that, I don't know. If you had an LED test light, if you had an LED test light, you'd just use an LED test light, wouldn't you? So, yeah, again, apologies for the buffering. Uh, I better go now and get all these people back that have rung me. <laughs> so I hope you all enjoyed the video. Like I say, the part numbers there now, they're all in the, in the video. I will put them in the video description as well. As far as I'm aware, in the EU, in the UK at the moment, the only supplier for the OTC test lights would be through scannerdana.com through his AES Wave store. Um, I'd highly recommend that you buy from there before anybody else for the OTC because Paul's actually supporting um, fellow technicians with grants and stuff like that through the proceeds of his AES Wave store. So Keith, Rick, Randall, Paul Mechanic. So, so I really am so sorry about that. I don't know what's going on. So all I was saying is thanks very much for watching apologies for the buffering i will never ever ever live stream again without turning me <laughs> without turning my phone on to do not disturb so thanks for watching you're awesome catch you later